we'll copy it over in class, a white line paper, and in ink. So what are we going to need tomorrow in class? Pens. Pens. Since 1971, Dr. David A. Tiki has been a fixture in the Newton Public Schools for both his teaching and his advocacy for the visually impaired. He never allowed his disability to hold him back, and upon starting his career as an English teacher at F.A. Day, he became the first blind teacher in Massachusetts. But it wasn't that easy because there were visual acuity laws, meaning that you had to have a certain degree of vision to teach in public school. Most administrators are reluctant to hire a blind teacher in a public school because uh, they think that a blind teacher may not be able to supervise a class, use instructional materials, are afraid of the reaction of the school community at large and parents and other teachers that this blind person will, will be equal. But Newton was open and, and understanding. While interning at Day Middle School, Principal Van Seasholes called Dr. Tiki into his office for an impromptu meeting. And he told me that he had spoken with many of the teachers with whom I connected with this internship uh, project. And he said there, there was an opening to teach seventh grade English and he offered me a job. And I, can't, I started crying. I, I couldn't believe it. Exactly. Is that right. all? Right, that's all you have to do there. Oh. Notice where they're put. Now it's going to be hard to notice where the illustrations are put when you have the children's book here closed. Open it up and look at it. He still had to get creative in managing his classroom since many were concerned with his ability to discipline students who might take advantage of him. The response to that was cheating was alive and well long before there were blind teachers in schools. And um, ultimately, a teacher has to earn the student's respect and you don't need 20-20 vision to be respected. So we talk about it and we developed an honor system. There were instances when I gave quizzes, I'd go down to the teacher's room and get a cup of coffee. And the teachers would say to me, what are you doing here? Don't you have a class? I said, yeah, but they're taking a test. And they said, they're taking a test and you're here? And I said, yeah. It's all about doing the right thing if no one's watching and no one will ever know. Dr. Tiki's whole life has been about surprising people by accomplishing more than expected. This includes creating a walk that fundraises for the National Federation of the Blind. Current president, Cher Winton, has witnessed his impact on the lives he's touched. He's a mentor in many areas of life in general. He's done so much in regards to teaching at a high school where he's not teaching only other blind students. In 2019, the Federation renamed the walk the David A. Tiki Walk. And we just wanted to honor that and let people know that he is the reason this walk exists and much of the reason that the NFB of Massachusetts is what it is today. More tears. <laughs> uh, I was just really touched and, and flattered um, by that. And, I mean, it's an honor because it's quite an organization. Um, to have basically your peers uh, do that honor in your, your name is... Uh, quite a compliment, so I was very deeply touched. Despite living a decorated life, Dr. Tiki remains humble and believes that he has been deeply blessed. Ultimately, when I pass on, I don't believe God is going to you know, read my resume. I ultimately believe Jesus is going to judge me on uh, my serving him and serving other people and uh, to, to be kind and, uh, and to love my neighbor. With no plans of slowing down, Dr. Tiki continues to serve our community with a vision most sighted people may never possess. For NNTV, this is Elena Arashidze.